Let's now take a look at 10.2. So we're talking about correlation and regression in chapter 10. And as we saw, 10.1 is correlation and 10.2 is regression. Uh, and so I'm gonna just point out that regression means regression line or linear regression. So a correlation was when there was some relationship between the X and the Y values for matched paired data. Whereas regression line is where the relationship you get is a linear correlation, not just any correlation, but a linear correlation. And the regression line is the line that would best reflect what's going on with the data. So if you imagine one of those graphs on a scatter plot with a whole bunch of points in it, quick and lousy. So if I have some graph with a scatter plot in it, then the regression line would be the line that basically that the line that you can draw that stays as close to the data values as possible. If the data values don't actually line up in a complete line, well, then obviously a line's not going to be a perfect match. So some lines will be better than other. If I drew a line over here, well, that all the data values are below that. So I should make my line higher. If I made a line up here, all my data values are below, um, I think I, are below that. So I should make my line lower. So you would expect the line will somehow do its best job mathematically to go through the middle of the data so that any point in there, when you see what the value of the line is, it's as best a prediction of what kind of Y value you could get as possible based on your X value. It's sometimes called the line of best fit because it's the line that best fits the data. That's the regression line. That's what we wanna look at in today's section. Again, we have lots of slides. We won't get through them all. We'll skip ones that are more about formulas and there's a lot of those. And then we'll see if we can get to an example of a stat crunch problem um, at the end of the session here. So key concept, this section presents methods for finding the equation of the line that best fits the points in a scatter plot of paired sample data. As I was just describing, where could I put the line that would fit as good as with the data as I possibly can? And that's by minimizing the differences in the values of the points from the values on the line. And that's done with mathematical formula. The best fitting straight line is called the regression line and its equation is called the regression equation. Then we discuss marginal change, influential points, residual plots as tools for analyzing correlation and regression results. We won't go into most of those details in today's introduction. All right, so let's define the regression line. Given a collection of paired sample data, the regression line or line of best fit or least squares line is the straight line that best fits the scatter point of the data. Basically, mathematically, for those who are motivated by this to understand things, you can imagine that if I put down a line, I can look at a particular X value, see what the Y value on the line would be and see how far that Y value on the line is from the Y value of the data that has that X value. That'll be how far the, the actual data value is from the line's value. And if I take all of those differences and I square them like a kind of like a distance formula and square root after I add them all up, you basically get the minimal, you're minimizing how far the differences are between the data values and the line values. And that's the line of best fit. StatCrunch will do all that for us. So what does an equation of a line look like for those who've uh, been working hard to forget all of their algebra and the introduction to lines there? This is the basic thing. And remember, there's some key things we wanna remember. There's uh, a number when you do a line. You may, re you may remember y equals mx plus b. So they're using something similar here where the number that's multiplied by x was called the slope. And the number on the end that's not a multiple of x, but it's just a constant on the end 
is called the y-intercept because that's actually the, the value where the line would cross the y-axis. Maybe you remember that, maybe not. But in this case, this floating number here that they're writing first, b sub zero is the intercept. And then the b1 that they're labeling here is the slope of our regression line. So that's like the, they're writing it more like B plus MX, but they're doing it B sub zero plus B sub one X. So B sub one is a slope of the line. B sub zero is the intercept of the line. And you will see the tools refer to the intercept and the slope and they're talking about those components there. This algebraically describes the regression line. Well, it just describes a line, but in particular, the B sub zero and the B sub one are chosen so that the line fits the data as best as possible. Okay, so we want this equation that best fits the, the data. So objective, find the equation of a regression line. So some more introducing uh, introduction of notation. So when you do the B sub zero and the B sub one, you will calculate these based on your sample. That's gonna be the sample statistic. So this is gonna be the line that best fits the sample data. So we, if we take a sample, we can graph those data values. We can find the line that best fits the sample. But of course, what do we want in statistics? We don't wanna just look at our sample. We wanna draw conclusions about the population in the whole. And when we switch between letters from our sample to letters for the overall population, they switch to Greek-like letters. And so notice instead of the B, they're gonna use this beta symbol for both the intercept and the slope, and then they're going to get the regression line for the population. And as usual, the idea is that the line we got for our sample is our best ability to predict what the line would be for the entire population. So we use the B values to predict the beta values. And it's just a matter of whether we believe there's sufficient evidence from our sample to conclude that this, the, this line we got from our sample would be a good line for the population, or even if there is a good line for the population. So as we saw from our scatter point values before, the data values from our sample may show that there is not a linear relationship between the two. And then even though we could get the line that best fits the data, we wouldn't wanna claim that it also is a good line for the population because it looks like the data doesn't have a linear correlation. And so we gotta keep our goal in mind as we're going through all this notation, the fundamental goal is first to determine if there is a good evidence for a linear correlation. And then if so, what would be the line that we could best use to predict that relationship? Next slide. So as usual, there are some requirements that we wanna keep in mind. And the first one is always the one that's been held whole throughout our work, that the data needs to be a random sample. But if you have biased data that gives you biased results, but I'm gonna focus on this. This is new with what we're doing in this chapter. And this is very important. Visual examination of the scatter plot shows that the points approximate a straight line pattern. And so this is key. This is basically saying that in order to use linear regression line for a population, it is a requirement that you look at a scatter plot, that you don't just do some numbers and look at numbers only. And we're going to see examples hopefully to illustrate that. So they did a good job in 10.1 of going through several scatter plots and having us look at them and make some decisions. And so we're gonna to need to rely on that also in 10.2 because it's one of our requirements when trying to make uh, linear approximations for the data of a sample or for a population is that we need to have a scatter plot to support the idea that there is a linear relationship at all. 
that the points approximate a straight line pattern. And if they don't, then it's a waste of time trying to use a linear regression equation for data that doesn't have a, a straight line pattern. As it says also here, outliers can have a strong effect on the regression equation. So remove any outliers if they are known to be errors and consider the effects of any outliers that are not known errors. So again, that's most easily done often with a scatter plot. So if you see a scatter plot and most of the data seems to be going up that, that, that uh, pattern, like if I draw a crappy little example here, if I have all my data going all very nice here, well then normally if it looked like that, I would probably get a line that goes through very nicely, oh, except I didn't draw that. I'm gonna try one more time, a little better. But if instead I maybe had a couple of outliers over here, well, that could really um, cause a problem. That could cause my line to all of a sudden go down here and get pulled away from the rest of the data. So it's quite possible that having a couple of outliers really throws off your linear model and makes it so that it misses a lot of the data because those two values pulled it away. And so what you might say is, well, if these data values are an error, then we'll just remove them and then I'll get the blue line. However, if I am not sure, then it says consider the effects of the outliers if it's not known that they are errors. So you might say, well, I see these two that look like they're outliers. The effect is that if I don't have them, I get this blue line. And if I do have them, I get this green line. And so we'll have to double check and see if we think they should be included or not. So there's some judgment to be made. And a lot of times the scatter plot really helps with that judgment. So we want to keep in mind the idea of looking at the scatter plot regularly as we do these problems. All right, so we have these requirements. And there's a note here about how the last couple of requirements are um, simplified attempts uh, about checking something that more formally would be for regression analysis, but they work perfect uh, for our needs in this class. So the idea is that for each fixed value of x, the corresponding value of y's have a formal distribution that we can sort of see the, the graph shows. Um, this is violated if the part of the scatter plot shows points very close to the regression line. Well, another portion of the scatter plot shows points that are much farther away from the re regression line, as we saw with some of the examples in 10.1. And that's why we really need to look at the scatter plot. For the different fixed values of x, the distributions of the corresponding y values have means that lie along the same straight line. Um, yeah, so we, again, this is kind of talking about the formulas more than we need to. We really want to just interpret the numbers. So let's move on. They're going to give you some formulaic work for how b1 and b0 are calculated. We will allow StatCrunch to do that for us. The formulas just get worse. Let's save time, effort, and fear about using those. Finding the regression line, it says round the slope and the y-intercept. So rounding b1 and b0 to three significant digits, it's difficult to provide a simple universe rule for rounding of b1 and b0, but this rule will work for most situations. I just want to illustrate here, because I noticed this, that um, problems in, uh, on your assignments often ask to round B1 and B0 to different places. So just I want to put out a red flag and give you a warning of that. So you'll have some where they ask you to see what's B1 and B0 for the regression line. And it'll say like round B0 to one decimal place and bound round B1 to three decimal places. So don't assume that these two will be rounded to the same places because they're not. <laughs> but as always in the My Stat Lab problems, just they tell you in the instructions where to round the number. So be very aware of that, be very cognizant of that, watch for that, and then round where they tell you to round. So then here's an example with 11 slides where they talk about using technology to find the regression equation, which is what we're going to be doing. 
So in the 10.1 slides, there was an example and discussion about the relationship between um, chocolate consumption and the Nobel laureate rate for countries. And the data they show in the next slides here, it's got a couple of slides actually. So this is like some, I'm guessing, tonnage of chocolate production for various country, and then the rate at which Nobel prizes were won by that country. And so we're literally investigating if we think there's a linear correlation between the amount of chocolate consumed by a country and the rate at which they win Nobel prizes. And the data continues because there wasn't just one set, they had more of them there. So then they made a scatter plot of all of those data values. And now they talk about the requirement checks. So again, part of our requirements force us to make decisions while looking at the scatter plot. So you really want to think about that. So it says the data are assumed to be a simple random sample. Maybe they were, maybe you need to confirm that. And if you don't know that to be the case, then obviously that would call your results into question. It doesn't mean you can't do the results, but certainly you'd really want to say, well, let's make sure that these were chosen randomly in some way. Then requirement two, the figure is a scatter plot showing the pattern of points. This pattern is very roughly a straight line pattern. So already we're supposed to look at this and say, yeah, all right, we'll say it's a straight line pattern close enough for us to do our work. And again, you could imagine a line trying to run through the data. And I would point out that there are a couple of, you know, semi outliers. They're not super extreme. Certainly if those data values weren't there, it would look like you'd have a much tighter correlation to the line but at least they're not moving the line very far away from the data as the line tries to stay close to them because they're on both sides of the line and they kind of balance out in terms of how they pull the line one way or another. And I would say that we can see a linear pattern here because as I mentioned before, you can kind of say, well, really, there's kind of nothing much going on up here or down here. And even though there's a couple of points starting to head in that direction, there's enough of a pattern here to see a, a, at least a rough straight line pattern as they describe, very roughly straight line pattern. And when we talk about outliers, even though those data values I circled are the farthest away from the linear pattern than the others, they're not like completely antithetical to it. They're not in the opposite corners or something like that. And so those are, are not wide enough to be outliers that would really throw everything off. So notice all of the judgment that I've been using here. Hopefully you won't encounter any problems in my stat lab where the judgment call is so close that it actually causes you to get something wrong. However, it will help you to go through the examples provided in the slides of how to judge scatter plots uh, and provided in the book because they go a little further so that by the time you get to the my stat lab problems, you're feeling a little bit more comfortable with the idea of judging these things. So then it says, if we use technology, we get this line. We get this formula for a linear regression line. And the idea is that all of these technologies show the regression line where Y hat is the predicted Nobel laureate rate and X is the amount of chocolate consumption. So when they put the Y hat there, they're saying, that's the Y value that's on the line. But remember, the Y value in the data is often not on the line, hopefully close to it. So that's why they have a special Y hat notation here to show this is the Y value predicted by the line, not the Y value we actually got from our data. Because if I look at a particular X value and I find the matched pair in the data set that had that X value, the Y value I get is probably not gonna be the same Y value I'd get if I plug the X into this equation here, but the value of this line will be there if it's pretty close. This is an approximating line. It's designed to approximate the relationship in the data. And technology will give us this equation. So they show various, um, programs. So here's our stat crunch that we use most frequently. Nobel rate is equal to, and notice this is the B sub zero value because it's the constant. And then the thing that's multiplied by the, 
the, the rate of chocolate consumption is the B sub one value. There's the intercept and the slope that we can read off of the equation in stack crunch. So the solution here, we should show that the regression equation is an estimate of the true regression equation for the population of paired data. And the one of the ways we show that is to show that the data of the scatter plot does seem to fit a line pattern. And then we'd have to have some level of assurance set on a, you know, like a significance level or something to make a formal conclusion. But no matter what, it's an estimate. The estimate is based on the particular set of sample data, but another sample drawn from the same population would probably lead to a slightly different equation. Just like every time you take a, a collection of data values and get the mean of your sample, you don't expect that that's exactly the mean of the population. And if you take a different sample, you'd get a different mean, but you're hoping that they're pretty close to the mean of the population because sample means do target the population mean. Same thing going on here. Different samples will produce different lines to approximate that sample. And we hope that the bigger the sample, the better the line of the sample approximator is to the line that, that would actually best approximate the entire population's value set. Slide number eight out of 11. Use the first formulas for B1 and B0 to find the equation of the regression line or just use technology as we just did. So they're showing you how they could have plugged into some formulas to get the values. Let's just trust that that would work out the same way. And so then there's the line. After rounding, the slope was B sub one and the Y intercept was B sub zero. And we can now express the regression equation. And of course, technology will just give us that directly. Okay, so it says an example of graphing the regression line. Well, once you have the regression line, you could add that to the scatter plot and see how well the line seems to fit the data. I've been just sketching one around the middle, but what they're showing here is the calculator's line of best fit. And as you can see, it does its best to basically trudge through the middle of the data and try to minimize how far the values of the line are away from the values in the data itself. So the worst case examples of error for that we can see would be like those two outliers, like that value there is pretty far from the value the line would give us at that same X value. This value here is quite far from how far the value on the line would be if I plugged in that X value, kind of close to 12. But all the rest, the errors between the line and the, the points themselves, if you imagine them as difference in the Y values, you know, if I move the line somewhere else, those errors would end up being a little bit more than they are here. This is as small as we can get. And that's the line of best fit. And StatCrunch will draw this line on the data set for us as well. Okay, uh, anything else I wanna look at in the slides? Making predictions. So regression equations are often useful for predicting the value of one variable given some specific value of the other variable. When making predictions, we should consider the following. What if you have a bad model? If the regression equation does not appear to be useful for making predictions, don't use it for making predictions. <laughs> for bad models, the best predicted value of a variable is simply its sample mean. So if you have a table of values with a bunch of X's and a bunch of Y's, da 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 and if you plot those pairs and the scatter plot shows you that this doesn't really have a linear correlation, well, you can still create the, the line of best fit, but it's gonna be a bad model because there isn't a good linear relationship there. And when you don't want to use a line, they're saying, well, then the next best option is to just take the mean. So if I wanted to predict the Y value for a particular X value, 
give me an X value and I have a bad model, then the best way to predict Y would be to just take the average or the mean. Add up all the Y values and divide by how many there are. That's your best prediction for the Y value you're gonna get because there doesn't seem to be a good linear fit here. So there will be problems where they have you come up with the linear line of best fit, but then you shouldn't use it. And then they'll ask you to make a prediction and you should say, oh, well, but the data doesn't really look like good for a line. So I'm just gonna take the average of the Y values. So keep that in mind, that does show up on some of your problems. Now, if it does seem to have a, a fairly good fit to a line, well, then you would use the equation you get and plug in a particular X value to see what you get for the Y value in the equation line and use that for your prediction. Use the regression equation for predictions only if the graph of the regression line on the scatter plot confirms the regression line fits the points reasonably well. So this is saying that even when you get a line, you still need to look at the graph of the scatter plot before you even use the line that you got. Before you use that equation, check the scatter plot and see if it's a good idea. Use the regression equation for predictions only if the linear correlation coefficient R indicates that there's a linear correlation between the two variables. So now we have two ways to look at this. You need a, a strong enough R value to say there's a strong linear correlation and that'll be dependent on your significance level. And you need to look at the scatter plot and make sure that it looks like a line is a reasonable fit. If the regression line for predictions, uh, use the regression line for predictions only if the data do not go much beyond the scope of the available sample data. So if you have sample data in a particular range, maybe you finish over here at 10 and you've got some data and you've got this line of best fit, and then somebody says, okay, well, what if I put in an X value of like 50, what would I get? Well, there's no reason to assume that the line would continue to work well for the data well beyond the value of 10. We, we don't play that game. <laughs> so do not use the regression line for predictions of the data value that go way outside the range that the line works for. Stay within that range and then it should be a decent prediction. So this is problem 34 from 10.2 on homework number 13, due this Sunday. So it gives us a data set. It says, use the given data to find the equation of the regression line, examine the scatter plot and identify a characteristic of the data that is ignored by the regression line. So we can find the regression line regardless of whether it's a good fit for the data or not. It's just the line that best fits the data, but that doesn't mean that the best fit is a good fit. So I would open up the data in StatCrunch. And it'll open up two columns, just like in 9.3 when we looked at matched data. But in 9.3, we were just comparing the data by going to, um, T stats. But what we're going to do now is go to regression because we're specifically looking at the idea of regression line and simple linear. And we need to choose the X and the Y variables. In this case, they are just labeled X and Y, very simple, but it could be like chocolate and Nobel prizes or something like that in the columns. And that's it. All of this stuff will be fine as the default. So let's compute. So we get this big box with a bunch of information in it. So first of all, let's just find what they ask for the line. And it says round to two decimal places as needed. So right up on top here, there's the R value. So sometimes you have problems that ask for the R value. There it is right there. But also the equation is right here as well. And the constant term is first, and then the multiple of X is second, just like is modeled here. Rounding to two decimals, I would take the constant Looks like I'm gonna to have to round the zero up to a one. And then I would take this is only has one decimal to round to. So I'll just take what it gives me. I could put a zero on the end, but I think it's happy without it. So then it wants us to create a scatter plot of the data and choose the correct, the correct graph below. So be before looking at what the scatter plot for our data would be, you can see we have a nice straight line linear pattern. Then we have a pattern 
in B and C that's very showing a strong correlation, but not linear, more of a curved or sort of like a parabola or something. And then in D, we have a little bit more of a cloudy kind of thing here, but we don't even know what's going on with our data. But certainly if it was one of these other ones, it, it might be that we don't want to use the line because the line ignores the fact that the data doesn't match with the line very well. But maybe it does, maybe it looks like A. So one of the nice thing is we don't have to go work with this data again. You could go to graph and under graph, you could go scatter plot. But actually, if you just stay here, they know that you wanna look at this. So there's another slide, it says one of two. And if you click this right arrow, it'll show you the scatter plot and it'll show you the regression line drawn through it so you can compare. So in this case, we can see that the scatter plot looks like that fits B, this kind of down curve here. I'm gonna choose B. And then it asks, identify the characteristic of the data that is ignored by the regression line. And so of these, I would say, um, the data has a pattern that is not a straight line. So over here was kind of the no pattern. If we were doing an R value, it would be closer to zero. We might get a decent R value here because these don't vary very far from the line and there's nothing down here and there's nothing up here. So these might have a pretty good R value, but the problem is that they much more clearly have a nonlinear correlation and that would be ignored by the R value or the line. And so that's our choice here. Questions about that at all? All right, let's see if we can uh, fit in one more here. So let me close this out. All right, so in this next example, it's pretty similar. Use the given data to find the equation of the regression line, examine the scatter plot, and identify a characteristic of the data that is ignored by the regression line. So they want the same thing. Uh, and in this type case, we are immediately asked to pick the scatter plot. So instead of asking for the equation first, now they're just going right to the scatter plot. I would still want to open the data in StatCrunch. And with the data open in, scatter, scat, in StatCrunch, if I just wanted the scatter plot, I could go graph scatter plot. Let me just show you and do X and Y. But the thing is, it doesn't give me any of that information about the regression line. So I could pick from this and try to match. It looks like the scale's a little bit off. Again, you can adjust these to try to have the scale kind of match. Also, this just goes up to 12 here, and this goes up to 25. That's why there's all this empty space. But it's still pretty clearly D here, where you have most of it in a line, and you have this point up here. So there's the line. But um, here, that's all they give you is the scatter plot. So instead, I would say maybe we'll want the line, and maybe we want the line drawn on the scatter plot. So if we go to the regression simple linear, then you get both. Then you can make the graph and also get the details about the line of best fit at the same time, whether you're going to use it or not. And so here, since if we had just been trying to do the scatter plot, then I would go to the right and go to the second tab, and then I could see that same scatter plot. But now we have the line of best fit drawn through it. Now, I would point out that a lot of this line seems to be above most of the data values. I would think the nice line would go more through the middle, but it's being pulled up because of this one value up here. That value is kind of thrown off the line, and you'd really want to check and see. It's not an extreme outlier like being over here or something, but it's definitely causing the line to be a above a lot more of the points than it needs to be, and maybe this value is an error. And maybe if I took that out, I'd get a, a line that I liked better. And that was discussed in the slides, considering the possibility that this an outlier is an error and how it affects the line. Like what would it look like with this point or without this point? Maybe I would identify this point and I would go back and take it out of my data set and make another line without it, as an example. But having said that, I can still pick graph D. All right, so then uh, it does ask for the line. So it's good that we use this. Let's go back to the other one. And also the warning I pointed out before is being illustrated. It says round the constant to two decimals and the coefficient to three decimals. So I'm gonna go back to the equation and this time 
I'm only going to get two decimals for my constant, but get instead three for the um, for the coefficient or the slope number, basically. That needs to be rounded up to 30, I think. But pay attention to the instructions in case they tell you to round the two different numbers to different places. I don't know why they do it. And then they want us to identify what the, the line is ignoring. And as I was just discussing, it's a lot, it's a kind of ignoring this outlier up here. And I would say there's an influential point that strongly affects the graph of the regression line. That's what's being ignored by the line. You don't see that when you see the equation or anything. 